the nexus of that uh, purchase was an engineering study that I had requested from TEC Engineering, and the purpose of that was to evaluate improvements, traffic flow improvements that we could make along State Route 48. And one of those was the ability to utilize a right turn, dedicated right turn lane on that property. That property is especially unique in its shape in that the longest part of the property is what front state about 48. That would allow a 100 foot right turn lane with what we call 50 foot taper and still leave quite a balance of property that after any remediation and demolition could be used for a pocket park area, it would never be used for any tax creating, tax bearing types type of property. Um, we, the, uh, we wanted to move forward um, with this expeditiously for a couple of reasons. One, there's currently grant funding that we have um, reached uh, into that will allow the city to secure all funds to demolate, demolish, demolish the bill, raise the structure, canopies, the whole deal, completely regenerate that. That's a significant savings to the city. Secondly, um, it will allow me to move forward with authorizing the engineering and design of the turn lane. The turn lane is actually a relatively simple, not overly expensive process because it's an at-grade improvement. That is a, that is a significant uh, item when you're doing construction. It's just simply an at-grade. If you could imagine, it's simply a turn lane going in there. One of the things that we benefit on is that the city already has the smarter technology traffic signals. So these, the right turn arrow, that would be the one that would come on as based upon the movement of the, of the other traffic, all in or less than $200,000 in the entire project. It doesn't include how much of the savings we would have if the project is part of a road program where we significantly uh, move, uh, where we get a significantly better rate. The one uh, idea, one of the nice things about this turn lane is while the dedicated right lane for the morning traffic when it's going to know and adjust accordingly based on the backup of the traffic. The flow on, on eastbound West Loveland can still make left, straight, and right. So it's sort of an orchestrated dance of movement of vehicles, which you're seeing all based upon that past investment in the technology. One of the reasons, other reasons we want to get moving forward is we will get to work with Buster and with the tanks and all of those different elements, plus um, to be honest with you, if it wasn't the fact that I would also need a permit for the railroad, it could have even be potentially it would have been added into the city's um, road program in 2022, but that's not going to happen because of what we had the permit. By getting the clock ticking now, allowing them the four months, uh, that allows the process to go. By signing the execution, executing the purchase agreement, I can I can get uh, authorization for what we call right of entry, knowing that we wouldn't get any demolition until afterwards from that standpoint. The, the, the purchase price, which uh, the city has orchestrated largely for our city solicitor, was done as a straight up agreement. There was no, it was not an eminent domain purchase, it was a straight up agreement. Joe authorized through their legal, that both sides were represented. So um, it was totally um, voluntary, totally executed on behalf. So we, I truly do believe that when the project is completed, the turn lane is in, this will be a benefit. I'll add one other element to it. From the funding standpoint of the improvements, this would be completely in line with the TIF uh, that was put in place uh, back in, I believe, 2014 or 2015 for the property up on um, Butterworth. That, pro that property has produced no TIF revenue because there's been no development. Now there is a development that will then begin to generate TIF revenue. The proper thing for the city to do with that tip revenue is to benefit that particular area. This is perfectly in line with what those tip funds would be used. As the tip funding starts to kick into gear, as the homes would go, and our homes are being built, as the homes are being built as we speak, the tip revenue is the city can do, use those funds for that project. So that really puts us in a good position. So I think that addressed everything um, I wanted to touch on. Um, put sort of the immediacy for it and the fact that um, um, we did not use eminent domain in the actual purchase. So uh, I don't think we want to have any questions?